All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about something we all crave happiness. Now, a lot of folks think happiness is this big old destination, like it's some kind of trophy you win and then you're done. But the truth is real happiness, the kind that sticks with you. It's about the journey, man. It's about finding those little sparks of joy every single day. So buckle up, get ready for a ride, because we're about to explore some powerful tools and techniques that can help you unlock a happier, more fulfilling life, one day at a time. Now, I'm not talking about busy like a hamster on a wheel, spinning your wheels and getting nowhere. I'm talking about engaging with life, man. Finding those activities, those passions that light your fire and make you feel truly alive. You see, when you're engaged, when you're lost in the flow of something you love, your mind ain't got time to wander off to those dark negative corners. It's like you're giving your brain a job it actually enjoys. And trust me, your brain will thank you for it. Think about it. What is it that you love to do? What makes the hours melt away like minutes? It could be anything. Painting, writing, playing music, hiking, building something with your own two hands. Whatever it is, make time for it. Even if it's just for a little while each day. Because when you're engaged in something you love, something that challenges you and excites you, you create this positive feedback loop in your brain. You start associating your daily life with feelings of joy, of accomplishment, of purpose. So go on, get out there and get busy. Find your flow, lose yourself in it, and watch as happiness becomes your natural state of being. Remember, happiness is a journey, not a destination. You know, we live in a world saturated with information. Every day, we're bombarded with news, social media, opinions, and it seems like a whole lot of it is designed to drag us down. Now, I'm not saying we should bury our heads in the sand and ignore the world's problems. But we gotta be mindful of what we let into our minds, man. It's like this. Imagine your mind is a garden. You wouldn't just let any old weed grow in there, would you? No, you'd cultivate that garden, nurture it, plant seeds of positivity and hope. The same goes for your mind. You gotta be selective about what you allow in. Limit your exposure to negative news and information. Surround yourself with positive influences, with people who lift you up and inspire you. Read uplifting books, watch inspiring movies, listen to music that makes your soul sing. Fill your mental garden with beauty, with truth, with kindness. Because the more you feed your mind with positivity, the more it will flourish. Look, I'm not saying it's easy. We live in a world that thrives on negativity, on fear, on doubt. But you have the power to choose what you focus on. Guard your mind like it's a sacred space because it is. We're going to talk about a powerful little practice that can have a profound impact on your daily happiness gratitude. This simple yet transformative habit can change the way you see the world and how you feel every single day. Now, I ain't talking about some cheesy superficial gratitude. This isn't about just saying thank you out of politeness or habit. I'm talking about a deep soulful appreciation for all the good in your life, even the little things. It's about truly feeling that sense of thankfulness in your heart. You see, our minds have a funny way of focusing on what's wrong, on what's missing. It's almost like we're wired to notice the negatives more than the positives. We get so caught up in the hustle and the striving that we forget to appreciate the beauty that already surrounds us. The daily grind can make us blind to the simple joys of life. But gratitude, my friend, gratitude shifts that focus. It helps us see the good that we might otherwise overlook. It's like taking a magnifying glass to all the blessings in your life all the things you might otherwise take for granted. It brings them into sharp focus. The warmth of the sun on your skin, the laughter of a loved one, a good cup of coffee in the morning, a roof over your head, the simple fact that you're alive and breathing. These small moments are treasures. These are all things to be grateful for. And when you start focusing on them, something magical happens. Your entire outlook on life begins to change. Your perspective shifts, your heart opens, and you start attracting more things to be grateful for. It's like a positive feedback loop. It's like gratitude is this powerful magnet, drawing in more joy, more abundance, more love into your life. The more you practice it, the stronger this magnet becomes. So how do you practice gratitude? It's simple, really. Start by taking a few moments each day to reflect on what you're thankful for. The more you make gratitude a part of your daily routine, the more natural it will become and the more happiness you'll experience in your life. Over time, this practice can transform your entire mindset and bring a deeper sense of joy and fulfillment. 
Now this one might sound a little touchy-feely, but trust me on this one, all right? Self-affirmation, recognizing and appreciating your own worth. You see, a lot of us walk around with this inner critic, this voice in our heads that's constantly putting us down, telling us we're not good enough, not smart enough, not worthy enough. And let me tell you, that voice, that inner critic, it's a liar. It's a thief of joy, a saboteur of happiness. So how do we silence that negative voice and cultivate self-love? It starts with recognizing your own strengths, your accomplishments, your unique gifts. Think about it. What are you good at? What are you passionate about? What makes you you? Celebrate those things, my friend. Own them. Don't be afraid to toot your own horn a little bit. And when that inner critic starts whispering its doubts and fears, counter it with affirmations. Tell yourself, I am worthy. I am capable. I am enough. Because you are. You are a unique and valuable human being deserving of love and happiness. And the more you believe it, the more you'll start to see it reflected back to you in the world. Now let's talk about mindfulness. This one's all about being present, about savoring the moment, about appreciating the beauty of right here, right now. It's about immersing yourself fully in the experience of the present without letting your mind wander to the past or future. You see, our minds are like mischievous puppies, constantly chasing after the next shiny object. They dart from one thought to another, rarely staying still. We're either dwelling on the past, worrying about the future, or lost in some kind of mental to-do list. Our thoughts pull us in different directions, making it hard to stay grounded in the present. And while it's important to plan for the future and learn from the past, we often miss out on the beauty of the present moment, the only moment we truly have. The present is where life happens, where we can truly experience joy and contentment. Mindfulness is about training your mind to come back to the now, to focus on your senses, to appreciate the simple things that are often overlooked. It's a practice that requires patience and consistency. It's about noticing the warmth of the sun on your skin, the taste of your food, the sound of the wind rustling through the leaves. It's about engaging all your senses to fully experience the moment. It's about finding joy in the ordinary, in the everyday moments that make up our lives. These small moments, when noticed and appreciated, can bring immense happiness and fulfillment. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Matthew, I can't just turn off my thoughts. It's a common concern, and it's perfectly normal to feel this way. And you're right. Our minds are busy places. They are filled with thoughts, worries, and distractions that can make mindfulness seem challenging. But mindfulness isn't about stopping your thoughts. It's about becoming aware of them, about observing them without judgment. It's about creating a space where you can acknowledge your thoughts without getting caught up in them. And in that present moment, my friend, you'll find a sense of peace, of joy, of connection to something bigger than yourself. It's a profound experience that can transform the way you see the world and your place in it. All right, all right, all right. Let's dive into something truly fundamental. Let's talk about something that's essential to our well-being, to our happiness, to our very humanity connection. It's the glue that holds us together. Human beings, we're social creatures by nature. We crave interaction. We seek out companionship. We thrive on connection, on belonging, on knowing that we're not alone in this crazy thing called life. It's in our DNA. Now, I'm not just talking about romantic relationships here. No, it's much broader than that. I'm talking about all kinds of connections, family, friends, colleagues. Even the barista who makes your coffee every morning, every interaction counts. These connections, these relationships, they nourish our souls. They make us feel seen, heard, understood. They give our lives meaning. They remind us that we're part of something bigger than ourselves, a community, a network, a family. But here's the thing, not all connections are created equal. Some are more impactful than others. Some relationships lift us up, inspire us, make us feel like we can conquer the world. They are the wind beneath our wings. Others, well, they drain our energy, bring us down, make us question our own worth. They can be toxic. Surround yourself with people who support you, who believe in you, who make you feel good about yourself. It's crucial for your mental health. You know, the kind of people who make you laugh, who challenge you to be your best self, who love you unconditionally. They are your true allies. Now, I'm not saying you have to cut off everyone who's going through a tough time or who has a different perspective than you. Compassion is key, but you gotta be honest with yourself about the impact certain relationships have on your well-being. Self-awareness is essential. Choose your tribe wisely, my friend. Your happiness and well-being depend on it. Uh, so there you have it, folks. We've covered a lot of ground. 
explored some powerful tools and techniques that can help you unlock a happier, more fulfilling life. Remember, it's about staying engaged with life, guarding your mind from negativity, practicing gratitude, cultivating self-love, being present in the moment, and surrounding yourself with positive, supportive people. Now, I know it might seem like a lot to take in, but the beauty of it is you don't have to do it all at once. Start small, pick one or two things that resonate with you, and start incorporating them into your daily life. And hey, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, for more insights on living your best life and share this video with anyone you think could use a little boost of happiness. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay true to yourself.